Hey guys, this is Ruben Langdon, aka Dante from Devil May Cry, aka Ken Masters from Street Fighter, and also Chris Redfield from the Resident Evil series. And you are listening to the Casanova Podcast, the number one podcast in Hawaii. Jackpot. The Casanova Podcast, the number one podcast in Hawaii, is brought to you by these contributors on Patreon. If you'd like to see more content like this more often, as well as more podcasts, reviews, impressions, early access releases, live streams, and original content, then consider becoming a patron today. and welcome everyone to another episode of hawaii's number one podcast the casanova podcast i'm your host Mikhail casanova and i'm coming at you with another phenomenal interview because today i have the true honor and privilege of interviewing the man who is the community specialist for bandai namco usa and that man is none other than dimitri clinton now i am just beyond in disbelief at the opportunity i have today to be able to interview dimitri and in this episode, we, we talk about a variety of topics from his position as a community specialist and him working with content creators and different projects, being into MMA and boxing and so much more. So if you're ready to do it, I'm ready to do it. Let's go ahead, give a big aloha and welcome to Dimitri and bring him on to the show. All right, and welcome everyone to another episode of Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova, coming at you with another amazing in- interview. And today I'm just blown away. I'm so honored with the honor and privilege of interviewing the one, the only, Dimitri. He is the community specialist for Bandai Namco. Man, I- I- I'm blown away by it. Thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> Uh, the honor's all mine. I, I appreciate you reaching out to me and, and uh, getting me on here. It's, it's, I, it's really cool to do this. Yeah, yeah man. Anytime, anytime. Uh, uh, let's um, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Like, what, what, are, um, what are ways that people can find you? Like, what are some social media plugs and, and projects that you are? And I understand the process of NDAs, but if there's anything you want to plug that you're working on, go ahead. Feel free. <laughs> Sure. So uh, uh, you said introduce myself. So uh, I'm Dimitri. I'm the community specialist over at Bandai Namco. There's uh, there's about well, let's see, we got one, two, three, four. One. Yeah, we got. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I, I get the number right. We got <laughs> four people on uh, the community manager, community specialist, other community specialist, and the other intern. So we have four different people on our team. There's four of us. Uh, I have one other counterpart, Cyrus, that works with me. Um, I've worked on, I, I work on a lot of times, I've been kind of like a, a restructure, so I kind of work on everything now, but I work on certain aspects only, so it's like uh, live streams and interviews, stuff like that, that's me. Uh, I basically execute, Cyrus does the planning. Um, I've worked on, I've worked on titles such as Dragon Ball Fighters, any of the stuff from Dragon Ball, that's me, wow. Ace Combat. Um, re- uh, currently it's Code Vein, that's kind of like my baby, I've been working on that for, for you know, two years now. Um, and it, it, yeah, it's it's a lot of like live streams, it's a lot of interviews, going to conventions, um, dealing with uh, content creators. I help them out getting codes and if they need interviews and such and stuff like that. So yeah, that's my job. It's what I do. It's my name. <laughs> that's gotta be fun, man. Like it, it, I can tell by your energy, you're very very passionate about what you do. And like, what what's like a, a normal day for you? Like your day to day. You're not on vacation. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for interrupting you in your vacation. But like, what what's a normal day like for you? <laughs> so uh, first of all, don't be sorry. I, I I don't mind being interrupted for stuff like this. Like my job is my life. I, I could say I'm on vacation, but mm. I I love what I do. You you said it was a dream job. Hundred percent. It is a dream job. Like coming in every day and talking about video games and working about video games. It's it's something that I could have only dreamt of. Um, 
day to day, I come in, I, I, I check emails, I make sure all the content creators have their codes. Um, I'm basically like the go-to guy. If, they, if something needs done, I get it done. Um, I, I, I line up live streams. Uh, if there's an event coming up, like say TwitchCon, uh, I, we work on planning stuff for that. We make sure we get the content creators to our areas where we need them and to, to you know talk about the games, to make sure they're playing our games. Um, I check on their content. Uh, I, I handle the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the all the social media pages. That's me. I do all that. I mean, granted, there is help from other people, but for the most part, I approve all the posts. Um, I, I make the posts. Uh, I you know make sure the the, uh, the content's okay. Um, I there's a lot of back and forth with our Japanese office, making sure that the the content that we put out is okay and making sure all the the, the terminology is fine, stuff like that. So there's a little minuscule things day to day that I probably missed or uh, can't talk about but that that's mostly day to day stuff and then long term is like you know planning out live stream planning out content for our channels awesome man awesome like that that I can't man that that sounds like it, it, it's so rare like when you you get to talk to someone who actually gets to have a dream job and they actually have the passion because I'm so used to running the people that you know, they, they work the nine to five and they hate their jobs. And it's like, it's reinvigorating to talk to someone that loves what they're doing. Man, I, I, I feed off that passion. I love it. <laughs> I love that energy. Yeah. I mean, when, when you, I, I, I always find it funny that people, and I, I've heard it too, where people in the industry are, are like, oh man, I, I don't know how long I can do this. Or like, I, I see them like, oh, I'm just, you know, getting burned out. I'm sure people get burned out. I mean, that's why we have vacation. That's why I'm taking my vacation. It's, you know, I, after a while, the, 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 the pressure and the weight, you kind of like get tired, but it's, it's never been a grind. It's never been like, you know, the, like it, it is a lot of work, but it, it's always been my dream job. And it's, it's because I, I, I'll walk by, like, as I'm walking to work, I'll see these guys working constructions out in the hot sun, lifting these just heavy objects. Mm. And I'm here sitting in the office or traveling around the world talking about video games. So for, for people to say that, like, oh, this job is difficult or, you know, it gets to you mentally, maybe sometimes, but like, when you step back and really think about what me and you do, we're in an office. We 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 play video games all day. Granted, there's more to it than that, but at the end of the day, our lives are not that hard. So, like <laughs> for anyone to to like, I, I hate to you know, uh, I mean, different people will handle pressure different ways. But for anyone to say this is like a super difficult job or like they they don't like doing it, it's it's crazy to me. Um, so yeah, hundred uh, percent dream job all the way. Awesome, man. Awesome. Like, and that's the other thing too, is that I feel like a lot of people like, uh, they don't understand like, cause I have a lot of friends that work in the gaming industry as well, you know, from Hori to, you know, PDP, Capcom, Nintendo. And it's, it's something like they have that same energy that you have as well. And then, you know, a lot of people that, you know, especially out here in Hawaii, we're so far removed from the rest of the U S and, and it's, a lot of people here, they're, the whole thing is like, oh, well, what's the gaming industry like? Oh, you're just playing games all day? Or the people that work in the gaming industry, they're just playing games? I'm like, it's funny because the gaming industry is like t probably 10% gaming and everything else is business. But it's all fun because it's centered around gaming. So, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's if, if it's centered around, you know, something you like it that as like video games it's yeah it, it it's always going to be fun i mean there you're not always going to have you know good days but at the end of the day it's video games it's not that <laughs> so um well, I, I have to ask you um what got you into uh into gaming and being passionate about gaming like what what is that moment for you i i always will remember this moment so i am I am seven years old. I'm. I've been in. I've been in. Uh, in the U.S. about a month. Like, I'm originally from Moscow, Russia. I'm, I'm Russian. Mm -hmm. We moved here uh, during the uh, downfall of communism. Uh, they, it's it's perestroika, the rebuilding of Russia. Um, so it, our place was a war torn. We had tanks driving through our, our, you know, our city. There was very little food. We had no meat. Like it was, it was very, you know, it was, it was, it was a rough, rough time. So our, our, luckily our grandpa was able to get us out in time and we were able to move to the U S and, you know, you come out here and it, it, it's crazy. Like you can get like a cheeseburger, you can get like food, like, like it's nothing. Um, but I, I digress. So I, I, yeah, I moved to the States. I'm in the U S I don't speak any English, not a lick of English. Um, 
And uh, I, I'm just kind of exploring my neighborhood. I'm, I'm living in San Francisco at the time um, in a little apartment with my mom and my, uh, my younger brother. Um, and I walk by this Radio Shack. And in the front display of re- for, for the, I don't know if Radio Shack still exists, but there are computer <laughs> pl- they're, they're stores that sell computers, video games sometimes. At the time, they did. They, they sold video games, uh, Game Boys, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm walking by this Radio Shack. Um, and inside the window... There is a, a computer. I remember it. I believe it's a Tandy computer. Uh, old school VGA 386 computer. And it's playing a game called Zaxxon. And then, uh, coming where I come from, from, from Russia, there there is no video games. Or there was no video games at the time. This was uh, 1989 is when I, uh, I came over here. And I, I see this computer running Zaxxon, which is like this top-down shooter. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm like, what? the heck is this i run into the video game i run into the radio shack and i i i, I don't speak any, any english and the, the guy's like can can i help you and i, I just point to the computer he's like oh you want to play i'm like I, I shake my head and he lets me you know like check it out and from that point on i was i was i was addicted to video games like just because like i've never seen anything being able to see those graphics on the screen and you know being a kid at the time you 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 kind of have to use your imagination. Zach sounds a little, you know, 2D space shooting game. And, but I didn't see that. I saw like, I'm, I'm a spaceman. I'm, I'm in space fighting aliens and the, the challenge of dodging these things and shooting them and blowing up and the lights and the sound, mm-hmm. uh, it, it just inundate, inundated me into the, like this, this world. And I was just like, wow, I, I need to see more of this. And as I grew older and as I, I, I met friends in school and stuff like that, they, they, they'd let me come over and they're like, hey, you want to check out, you know, Super Mario Brothers? I'm like, what is Super Mario Brothers? And like, I come over and I play it and like, hey, you want to check out Alter Beast? And I'm like, heck yes, I want to check out Alter Beast. <laughs> I've been watching commercials about Alter Beast. So it, I, video game has been a part of my life since early childhood. I've, I've always been in video games. I didn't think I would make it this far. I mean, I got to... Uh, the, the when I first started, it was a video game store. It was Funko Land. It was like a brick and mortar type place where you, you could, yep. you know, yeah, yeah. And some people know Funko <laughs> Land. You could buy some trade uh, old school video games, and that that was my. And I was like, that, I was I became a manager. I'm like, this is as far as I can make it. This is it. This is I'm I'm in the industry. I'm I'm you know I'm I'm a manager of a video game store. I'm, I'm in the industry. And little do I know, like little by little, like oh you know well uh, you're really good at talking about video games. How about you come work for for Sony? How about you test video games? Okay, well I'll go test video games. And ever since then, like little by little, I've been I've been moving up in the video game industry. And it, it's uh, I I don't know how far I'm gonna you know go. I want to go farther. I obviously have have goals and a vision of what I want to do at, at at the end of, at the end of the day. But it's it's always it's both always been about video games. That that's always been my passion. So man, awesome. So- you, you and I have a lot more in common than I realized. So I'm also not, I, I came to America. I'm originally from Western Samoa and I came to America when I was seven years old, didn't speak a lick of English. And, um, it was me, um, and my older brothers and my, one of my sisters. And it's, um, this is crazy, man. Like, wow, that we have something else in common like that. If, uh, if, if you don't mind me asking, what, what made you move to the States? Um, for our family, it was just because my mom, um, wanted us to live with our dad. I, my dad was uh, military at the time and he was stationed in Memphis, Tennessee. And instead of him, I guess, because my mother wanted more stability, she didn't want us to be hopping from place to place to place all the time. Uh, so it would basically be, he would come to Samoa and just spend some time with us then go back and do whatever he needed to do if he had to PCS or anything like that. And she just decided, no, you know, I just want my family together. I got, she, I guess she got sick after 10, 15 years of him in the military. So she just wanted to move our family to where he was. And we went there and then that went south because they ended up divorcing. (laughs) And then we kind of got left. But it, it, it's pretty bad because my mom, um, I mean, her English is, you wouldn't be able to tell it's not her first language now, but it was bad then because he kind of just ditched her and had his own other family and it was us and we were just trying to make it work while we were there. And so the area of Memphis we live was actually down the street from uh, Elvis Presley, old, uh, his mansion, but the neighborhood, and a lot of people don't know this, like the neighborhood around the the uh the the mansion is really really bad 
and that's where we were. And so we had the cultural difference and, and, you know, the language barrier. And it just got to a point where my mom was like, I think when I hit uh, 14, 15 years old, my mom told me, and she's like, we're going to, we got to move back to the islands. I, I can't stand being here anymore. So for me, she's like, she'd already been homeschooling me just because my siblings, my older siblings kept getting in fights all the time. And it was always us getting picked on because, you know, we had longer hair. Most Samoans, uh, we usually grow our hair out. And in where we were, it wasn't very diverse. So we were sticking out like a sore thumb. And my mom just, she's like, yeah. She's like, you're going to test out. You're going to go to college. I'm like, mom, I'm only, I'm only 15. She's like, I don't care. You're doing all this schoolwork. You're just going to test out. You're going to go to Hawaii. I'm like, Hawaii? I thought we were going back to Samoa. She's like, no, we're going to Hawaii. Here, we're going to stay with my sister and we're just going to go from there. And then, yeah, that's, I've been out here for 17, uh, 17 years, <laughs> 18 years. <laughs> Your mom sounds like a very strong woman. Uh, to a fault, to a fault. <laughs> and my mom's the same way. She, she, she made sure I, I, you know, went to school and make no, like, no matter what, you're going to learn this language, you are going to be successful. And sure enough, they, you know, they both, both of our moms pushed us to, uh, to be the best we can be. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so I, you know, I, I know you, you glanced over it earlier, but man, how did you get into like the gaming industry and you know with that like your journey like let's talk about your journey i know you say you did testing and then you you know you've worked at various companies like how, how did that start sure so uh, i can i can kind of go into that um i can give you like the, the finer details i started when i was in high school i was working at burger king at the time and i used to visit the video game <clears throat> sorry one sec let me no, get no. some water go for it that's something kind of my thing. I, I, I thought I would like, not have to cough, <clears throat> but let me just clear my throat real quick. No, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I was working at Burger King at the time. It was like one of my first jobs uh, out of uh, – still in high school while I was in high school. And the video game store was upstairs. Funko Land was upstairs. Uh, the manager would come down there and order his food, and I'd go upstairs and play video games, and we'd talk about video games. Uh, me and him became friends, and he's like, hey, man, you, you're really into this. You know, Why don't you try applying here? I, I interviewed, I got the job, I, like, looking back at it, I, I thought it was, like, I was so stressed out about interviewing for the video game position, but, like, looking back at it, it's like, they just needed people to work, so <laughs> I, I, I went in there, and as long as you knew about video games, you pretty much had the job, um, it really involved kind of, you know, selling, it, it, it all of it was based on commission, so selling cleaning kits, selling memberships, that's what we did, we pushed those things, I mean, we got our regular hourly wage, and then we had the commission as well, so you had to be really good at talking to people, and I kind of developed a a system of, of like, just talking to people and make sure they bought the cleaning kit and making sure they bought the membership. Uh, working at a video game store, you're going to have people in the industry come in to buy their video games. Mm -hmm. So um, I had a guy from Sony who I'm, I still keep in contact with today. He's he's one of my best friends. I'm actually going to his wedding in November. Wow. wow. Um, he's, the one that, he's the one that really kind of, I mean, video game store is, I wouldn't say it, it it's, it's kind of the doorway to the industry, but it's not the industry. So he he's the one that really got me into the industry. He was a uh, a senior. He was a QA lead, which is like a uh, he manages the other testers. Um, he got me into into Sony. It was a contract job. Was, I was there for a year, and I was a third party tester. So I would test all the uh, all like the third party games that would come in from other companies. So I was working there. Um, did really good. Found a lot of bugs. You know, did that. <laughs> Uh, and then, like after the contract was up, they Sony doesn't usually like kind of well. If if you're really really good, but you have to come back like multiple times, you have to have multiple contracts. They they kind of have to see that you want it. Um, that that's when they hire you. I was there for a year, my contract ran out, and I was I was kind of just like uh, I I was done. So between the 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 the, the video game uh, the job working at the store and between Sony, that's when I was like when that's when I was I was living out of my car. I just couldn't afford. Uh, at apartment at the time working, you know, at, at, at Funko Land. Um, I got a place and then it just like, I, I got kicked out. Like I just couldn't afford the rent. So I had to live out of my car for, you know, two, three months until I was fine. I was able to find something. It was just all my clothes was in that car. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was in there. I would just sleep in the parking lot and then just go to work the next day. So uh, I won't go into like the, 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 the details and trials and tribulations that we could save that for another time. 
But okay. uh, yeah, going back to Sony, uh, I, I was there for a year. And then I went over, uh, I got contacted by Sega. They found me on LinkedIn and like, hey, do you want to apply for this? And I was like, sure, you know, it's a nine month contract. So once again, it was, it was testing. But this time, Sega was a little bit different. They, they saw my potential and I, I moved my way up. I became a, uh, an assistant lead, then I became a QA lead. And then I moved up to, uh, they wanted to, uh, they, they wanted to keep me around. They kind of were like phasing out the stuff and they were moving the, lead, uh, the testing stuff to another uh, location, mm-hmm. but they wanted to keep me. They saw that I was, I was really good. Like I, like I said, I have a passion for this thing and I'm, I'm really driven when it comes to something I want to do. So they, they wanted to keep me around. They, they put me in the mastering lab. So I became a mastering lab technician. And what that is, is basically wow. we put the, the code onto the disc. We send them out to to you know, third parties, we send them out to the testers. Uh, we we transfer codes over to to the to the test console stuff like that. So that's what I did there. And then they still didn't want to let me go after they kind of uh, there was a big layoff at Sega a while ago. Now this was in the San Francisco office. They moved everything uh, to LA, I believe. Um, and uh, so uh, they still didn't want to let me go because they had the mobile office. And they're like, hey, we want to keep you on and as a as a um, a mobile like lead. I'm like, I know nothing about testing mobile games. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know why you want me to do this, but hey, it's a job. I'll do it. Just know that it's going <laughs> to, I, I have to get trained. I don't know how to do this. So I, I, I go to the mobile department. I worked there and I'm, I'm, I was still there at the mobile division. Then I was in, um, we, uh, we, we had the, the Sega office and then we had a developer office called Three Rings, which is mm-hmm. kind of, they developed some of the smaller titles. You might have not heard of them there. They're, they were relatively small at the time. They came to me with a decision. They said, hey, do you want to uh, do you want to stay here at the Sega mobile office or do you want to go to the Three Rings office? Because the Three Rings office needs help. And it was like upstairs, downstairs, upstairs is Sega, downstairs is Three Rings. Uh, and they're like, well, I thought to myself, well, if they really need me and they're asking for me, I'm, I'm there wherever I'm needed. So I, I kind of make the switch. I'm still technically at Sega, but I, I'm more I, I sign a contract kind of with Three Rings. And uh, at the end of it, three rings, everybody got laid off. So if you were three rings, they, you you were canned. You, Sega, still, Sega Mobile, I believe, is still in San Francisco, I, I, I think. But if you were three rings, like if you have a contract with them, even though I was technically a Sega, they're like, they, they have to lay you off. That was just like everybody at three rings got to go. So it was kind of luck of the draw. You know, it was just like I was at three rings. I, I had to go. Luckily, the, the QA supervisor for Sega – he already had left the company. He didn't. He didn't stay at the mobile division. He went over to Bandai Namco, and I contacted him. I was like, "Hey, man, I, I got laid off. I got I got nothing. I'm gonna look for stuff. But is there is there anything for me? Like, why don't you go look on the web page and see what kind of uh, or the Bandai Namco website and see what kind of job looks uh, looks interesting to you? And I look, and there's a bunch of like programming stuff, and there's network stuff, and there's IT stuff, and I know none of that. But I saw the community job, and I, I, I read the description. I was like, wait, I did some of this at Sega because while I was at Sega, I would help out at events. Like uh, if uh, if we were at E3, I'd be the one driving the game, and the community person would be the one talking about it because yeah. I was really good at playing video games. They were really good at talking about video games, so I, I'd be the driver for that. And I, I applied for the community part. There were about – I, I want to say there were maybe – Five or six, maybe ten people that were that, that were ahead of me that had experience that they were interviewing beforehand. Mm-hmm. I had no experience going into this thing. I was like, "There's no way I'm getting this job unless I set myself apart. I have to, I have to bring something to the table that the other community people don't have. I have a resume, but it's 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 nothing compared to the guys that that, that probably interview and they probably have experience in the community part and the social marketing part. Mm-hmm. I had none of that. I was like, "All right." Think, think, think. What am I going to do to set myself apart? So I look at the job and I look what it requires. And I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll make a podcast and I'll make a, a video and I'll show these guys like, hey, I can create content based around your titles, based around your IPs. And I, I can do this for you. Mm-hmm. And so I did. I, I created a, a podcast called The Stage of History. I still have it on my laptop. <laughs> it's a, it's a, It was a, a podcast kind of that goes into – the history of different games. So I made a stage of history for Pac-Man and I did all this research. I, I spent a week researching Pac-Man. Why, uh, you know, why did the creator create this character? Why was he called Pac-Man? Uh, you know, what, what, what are, what were the influences for the game? And I put this together and I cut it down into this, like this 10 minute podcast talking about the history of it. I took that with me. And then I also like, well, I need a video aspect. Like, I can give him the audio. That's fine. But I need something more. 
So I made a top 10 Naruto facts video. Yeah. All right. I kind of went through and, you know, you know, what are the top 10 facts about Naruto? And I put that together in a video. I cut all the different little, uh, I, I took videos from, from, uh, from other YouTube channels of uh, the Naruto, Naruto games at the time. Mm-hmm. And I, I cut that all together and talk into a top 10 Naruto facts video. I put it on my phone and I go into the interview. So if, if there's one tidbit I can offer the people listening, if you're, if you're looking for a new job and you don't have the experience, bring something to the table that will sell you, set yourself apart. Um, I, I know it, it's kind of a, you know, it goes without saying type of thing, but some people don't think about that. Some people think a resume will just carry them through interviews and stuff like that, and it won't. But yeah, that's, that's how I got the job. I mean, it, it, from, from working at Burger King to, to working at Bandai Namco, it, it's crazy. And at the time, actually, uh, I, uh, going back to Burger King, the reason I, I like wanted to, to work at Burger King was I, I could save up enough money to buy a PlayStation 1. Which I see in your background there, uh, <laughs> uh, Tekken Three and Ace Combat. Man, and Nam- or at the time it was just Namco. Uh, though that was my my favorite company. I thought they made like the greatest games. I love Ace Combat Three. I love Tekken Three. It, it was I was like, man, th- this is so cool. And then like going in there and seeing all that stuff in their office, I I, I was just fanboying out. I was so excited. And then when I got the job, I was running around the house like crazy. I was like, I can't believe I got you know and. and <laughs> That's that's why it's a dream job to me, like playing the the games that these people make, and then going to work for the company and seeing how like the the sausage is made. It, it's crazy to me that this is what I get to do. It, it, it's almost like destiny. Like I was destined to do it as 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 I don't know, cocky as it sounds. It yeah. it, 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 <laughs> it 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 blows me away every day. And that's why I have this energy for. It. That's why when I'm like talking about Ben and Amco or talking about where I work, I'm, I'm always like. So happy and smiling about it. it it's they're difficult times. It's it's never it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, and the, there's been times the, actually. So while I was working there, just to give, me, give you an example of difficult times, mm-hmm. uh, I get hired on, and I'm like, okay, well, uh, they're going to teach me. These guys are going to teach me how, the ropes. They're going to teach me how to do. And for you know a couple months, they did. They they taught me uh, uh, what I need to do and what my job required of me. Two months into the job, the no. Yeah, yeah. Two months into the job, the the community manager he leaves. He's like, "Well, guys, I'm I'm going, you know, to another company." I'm like, "Oh, wow. Okay. Well, at least you know the the other community specialist here. He, he's here. He's gonna help me out." And then three or four months later, he leaves. You know, he's he's got his own personal reasons why he left, and I'm by myself. It's two months into my job. I know very little about what I'm really supposed to do, uh-huh. and I'm by myself. For the next two months, it's just me running the entire, all the social channels for for Bandai Namco, and I, was, I it, there were some tough, tough times. Like, or I was getting like two hours of sleep, and it, it was, it was, it, it, it was crazy at the time. Um, luckily, you know, we we found the right people, we have the right team in place now. But yeah, at the time, it it was just me. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was a really interesting time. But I I got through the fire, and everything's cool. Yeah, you know, and, and, and there's a lesson to be learned in that is that no matter what you're going through, keep walking forward because this too shall pass, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, that's my motto, forward always. Yep, yep. Oh, man, that, that's, that's, that's a hell of a journey, man. I, 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 I dig it, you know, and it, there's a lot that I, I definitely feel that the audience can take from that and, you know, learn from and even incorporate in, in, into their own lives. So thank you for, for sharing your story with us with that. And, you know, um, you know, in, in your role as a, you know, community specialist for Bandai Namco, and, you know, you work with a lot of content creators. So you know, I was actually curious, like, what is that process? Like, is there, are there certain things that you or Bandai Namco like looks for when it comes to content creators, uh, uh, or with working with content creators, are there specific things like requirements that they need to meet? Um, or is that an NDA? If so, we can skip it. I mean, no, no. I mean, there there is some NDA stuff, um, but there is some stuff. I mean, from a personal standpoint, what I look for is just good content. You don't have to have the biggest numbers. There's there's people I work with that like aren't huge YouTube stars, aren't, you know, huge streamers or anything like that. But I look at their content and I, I, I look at the the stuff they create and it, it, it's quality content that wins every time. Honestly, you don't have to be the biggest person in the world. 
you don't you know have to have the, the 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 biggest numbers you have to have that drive and you have to have that 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 attitude you know and yeah. it, it's it's you know if it's a matter of just getting you a code or promoting your stuff on our channels it, it it's not about numbers it's really about quality content do other people want to see your content that that's what i look for it's like oh man is this, is this something that that puts us in a good light is this something that focuses on the game is this something that that you know other people would want to see then you know that that's the quality i look for and my community manager is fine with me you know looking for those qu quality i mean granted numbers are great but the the, the if your if your content's good it's going to happen eventually people are going to catch on you know everybody's got to start somewhere and i don't mind helping out the the smaller the smaller channel so yeah the short answer quality content and, you know and that's one of the things that um you know with a lot of the content creators that you know, I don't want to associate with no matter how big or small. Um, I, I try to tell them constantly, like when you're making content, just make sure you put your best foot forward. It's just like, you got to treat content creation like you would go into a job. You got to be on time. You got to give your best effort. You got to know what you're doing and just try to do the best that you can, you know, especially with a lot of the small, uh, smaller content creators that I've worked with and some that I'm helping coach, which that's one of the things I'm doing now is I'm, I'm actually coaching people on how to start podcasts, which is crazy. But, um, with, uh, ones that are working with companies are like, Hey, Mikhail, how do I reach out to this company? How do I, how should I review this coach? Should I do what this bigger YouTuber is doing? I'm like, no, be you. Be the whole part of YouTube is you, the you in YouTube. It's like, do find your voice, create your content and just bring some quality to it. Because if there's value in the content, the people will come. it's like you said the people will come, you know and that's that's really uh one of the things i find to be very very pivotal and that's something too like out here in hawaii i know there are not that many content creators i think probably on one hand i could count everyone that's out here um and this that's one of the things i'm trying to dispel and i'm working with a couple other content creators out here too to do that is to help creators in Hawaii not feel like just because we're in Hawaii that we can't work with the industry or we can't reach out. I'm like, this is their social media, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. One thing that always kind of like stuck me, and this is something that happened recently. I was, I was doing a uh, live stream with uh, Gerard, the completionist mm -hmm. uh, uh, at during E3. And he said, if you're, if you're going to make a grilled cheese sandwich, Make sure it's the best grilled cheese sandwich. And what what he meant by that was like if, if you're gonna you know put out content, we were we were talking in terms of like you know why he's why, how he found this kind of niche in, in what he does, and he's very successful at it, obviously. Um, but he the the reason that stuck with me is because like if, if you're gonna make put out content like you know video game content, make sure it's the best content that you can, and, and you know make it your own, like you said, be yourself. Um, and you know, Hawaii, yeah, definitely not known for their content creators. You're actually the first one I met there, but that, that, that's kind of cool because it kind of gives you that, that open space. Well, you know, like I'm one of the first content creators from Hawaii or this is, you know, the, it, and honestly, at the end of the day, it, it doesn't really matter too much where you come from because the, the, the content is what matters going back to the whole, you know, quality content. So definitely, definitely. <laughs> and, um, you know, switching gears away from, from the gaming industry. You're a fan of Russian Sambo and boxing. Like, and I give, I, I'd wager that you're a fan of MMA as well. So what got you into that? So actually, I, I used to do, am, uh, I, I used to do amateur MMA. Uh, and actually, I'm kind of just getting back into it. Like, I've, I've been losing weight. I've been going to the gym, making sure I'm, I'm in shape. And what, what got me into that? So when like when uh, this all goes back to when i came over here to the states earlier when i came over here earlier i uh food was in abundance like coming from war-torn russia where mm -hmm. we survived on cabbage soup and black tea pretty much to coming over here to the states and being able to buy a cheeseburger for you know 59 69 cents holy smoke so we go we go we go ham on this stuff we start yeah. eating food left and right uh, and uh, next thing i know i'm in high school and i'm weighing 265 pounds just this huge kid um that like wow. just super overweight and 
you know, no, I wasn't, I didn't have the, my father figure in my life. Like he left us when I was two years old in Russia. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, you know, my mom, she, and she, my mom, she, you know, she did the best she could with what she had, but she had to work, you know, she had, she had us two to take care of and she had the rent. So she was constantly working. We were just kind of on our own. So we're over here eating, cutting school, just being terrible, terrible kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, next thing I know, I'm in high school, I'm 265 pounds, I'm, I'm waking up with, like, nosebleeds and chest pains, I'm in bad, bad shape, like, horrible shape. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's pictures out there, you, you could see that I'm, I'm close to, like, 300 pounds, I'm a big kid, and I, I, I'm, I, I gotta do something. And at the time, when I was working at Funko Land, the first season of The Ultimate Fighter came up. Actually, no, even before that, before I even started watching The Ultimate Fighter, uh, I uh, I used to watch VHS tapes of, uh, you know, the first UFC. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. They're actually, like, fighting, and they're letting them fight. And it's, <laughs> it's real fighting. They're really punching people in the face. I want to do that. And then I look at myself, I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I'm 265 pounds. I'm just this, like, fat kid who's into video games. And... Uh, like, uh, you know, it was kind of like a lost dream. And then the ultimate fighter comes on and you see these guys like coming up from like nothing. And they're, they're over here training super hard. And I'm just like this, this overweight kid in front of the TV. And I'm like, I, I want to do this. I want to do this. And I didn't have anybody at the, the, the time to show me good nutrition and good work. Like I, I, I try to get in shape. Like I, I would go to the gym for like a month or two and I'm like, oh, well, nothing's happening. I'm still fat. And it, it, it's not going to work. So I just like stop. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have any at the time to kind of, it, what I learned was it's consistency. It's always consistency. I didn't have anybody at the time to kind of show me and show me discipline and show me what I need to do in my diet and how to diet correctly. But when I was working at Funkel and my assistant manager at the time, this was when I was a, a manager there. Um, and he was my assistant manager. We had a, uh, we had another guy who was his friend who was a football player and he was just, just, just extremely ripped dude. And he just very athletic, and I, I was in the worst shape of my life. Like I said, I was wake. I would be. I wake up and there's blood on my pillow, and I wake up with these huge chest pains. I, I was too scared. I didn't have the money to go to the doctors, and I was too scared. I was like, oh, well, I don't want to find out if I have something. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm I'm working, and I, I I go up to this guy. It's like, hey man, can can you can you help me? Can you can you train me? He's like, I'll train you, Dimitri, but you have to listen to everything I say. You have to show up to every practice. No ands, if or buts, just you show up every time and you do exactly what I tell you. And I can guarantee you, I will get you in good shape. I was like, whatever it takes, man, I, I just, I don't want to die. And he, he like, you know, he got me out on the field. He's like, no, you're not going to the gym. It's not the gym. You're, you're going to be running out here. You're going to be doing pushups out here. So for the next three or four months, he would just have me out on uh, out on the the high school football field running laps, running laps. After the laps were done, it, it's push-ups, it's bear crawls, it's it's whatever. Every night from when I got off work, after working eight hours, I I, I would be there from seven to eleven p.m. So what's that? Seven. So that's four hours. I'd be yeah. out there, and he'd just be just grinding me like no push-ups, jump rope back to running. You're going to sprint these. You're going to run these. You're going to sprint these. And he would just have me out there and he'd have my diet on points. Like you're, you're going to, this is what you're going to eat. And it, I was taking in about like 500 calories a day. Like I was, I was eating salad. I was eating oatmeal and I was eating chicken. That's it. And then I'd be out there. And every time I'd get hungry or every time I get tired, I, I, I think about it. It's like, do what, what do you want? Do you, do you want to die? Cause if, if you go back to what you were doing, you're going to die. And sure enough, after, you know, two months of, of, of super strict dieting and, and working out six days a week, I, I got into decent shape. I dropped 100 pounds. And he's wow. like, okay, now, yeah, yeah. And, it, like, he's like, okay, now we can go to the gym. Now you can go in there and start lifting weights. And then, when, like, when I got in there and I started lifting weights, I, I love this. I'm, I'm like, it's like being a superhero, you know. It's the closest <laughs> thing we'll ever be to superheroes is having, like, super strength. So I'm, like, over here lifting, and I'm, I'm seeing the definition come in, and I'm seeing all this. I'm like, okay. Well, you're doing all this. Why do, do you want to test your like, why are you doing all this? Is it just for looks? Is it just I mean, you're healthy now, you know, but why are you doing this? And then uh, I, the at the time, I, like when I was losing weight, the ultimate fighter came. Out, I was like, hey, I'm I'm in shape. I, you know, I, I can find a, uh, a gym that did, teaches boxing. I can find a gym that that teaches like Russian. Style. So I started looking up online. Where can I, you know, where where can I find a, a gym? And there was a local one. That trained him, man. There was another gym that trained boxing at the time, and I, I, I kind of walked in. I was like, "Hey, I, I want to fight," 
And like I thought for sure they'd kind of like laugh at me, and they were like, "Ah, yeah, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're this, this old. You got all this like loose skin." But no, they, they. Luckily, I I found two coaches that understood that if you have a dream and you you have the drive, and they saw it in me, they they saw that I had that drive to like it wasn't just a one fluke thing. It wasn't like oh I just want to train for a little bit and then leave. I I want to like fight. And my MMA coach at the time, who was actually the football coach of the guy that used to train me. He was an, actually an MMA fighter, uh, okay. professional. So nothing, nothing big, no big, like really big organization, but he did fight professionally. He had 10 like pe- professional fights. And, you know, he went in there and got me my start. I, w- I was in there. Uh, he got me into some some smokers over at AKA, which are like amateur matches. Um, I, I got some of those in and I started to get really good at this stuff because I was so passionate. That's the thing with me is if I, if I find something I'm like super, I'm like a dog with a bone. If I find something I'm passionate with, I'm holding on to it. Yeah. So. I, I started training. I, I started, you know, he, he would teach me wrestling and he would teach me boxing because he would be training over at AK. Sometimes he'd be training at other places. So he'd take that knowledge and bring it in there. And the one thing that I had over the guys that I was training with is the boxing because I'd go to another gym and I, I'd be, I was spending like my money that I was working. At. I guess that's another reason why I was living in my cars because I was spending my money on, on, uh, on training and stuff like that. Um, but that, that's what I wanted to do. So I, I, I had the boxing. So when like when we'd have these sparring sessions, they noticed like I was really, really good at boxing. And I, I was. I, I went three and oh as an amateur. Nice. Um, but then I, I you know I, the, 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 the the training started to take its toll. Like I had a torn rotator cuff, I broke my foot, broke my arm, um, I had like my teeth busting, like all these are fake right here. These four these four front teeth like, yeah, they're veneers. they they had to be they're implants. They had to be put in because I got my face kicked in. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a long story, but like the injuries took its toll and I was like, man, I'm, I'm kind of too old to be, to be fighting. Like I, I wanted to go pro, but I kind of, I, I, I let that go. The younger guys, you know, are getting up there, but the, the, the Russian Sambo stuff like that, as, as I moved forward in my career at the time, as an, as an amateur, MMA, I went to other gyms and I found like other places and I was lucky on, I was lucky enough on the day to come in and train with uh, Nate and Nick Diaz's uh, Sambo coach, Val, uh, Valerie Ignikov. He was at the gym, at oh, the gym I was training with at the time. And uh, Russian Sambo is what I was looking for. And he was he's Bulgarian, but he still, he knew the art. And he would teach me like these leg locks and stuff like that. And I, I, I fell in love with the Plus, the best fighter in the world, Fedor, is Russian. So I, I, he was a guy I always looked up to. So when I found out about Fedor, I was like, well, what's this? What's his style? And it, it, it's Russian Sambo. That's what it, so I was like, I got to learn. It's A, it's it's from my country. You know, and, and B, the best fighter in the world is using it to like kick all these guys butts. Mm-hmm. So I have to, I have to like, I have to figure it out. And so I would watch videos on Russian Sambo. And then luckily I, I met Val and he would, you know, he taught me the, the, the basics, the throws, the leg locks. A lot of, of the big aspects of, of Russian Sambo is leg locks. Yeah. Um, and it's basically... Russian Sambo is basically amateur MMA, like with a gi and, and headgear. So, I mean, you're, you're throwing punches, you're throwing kicks. So I, I did that for a while. And then, uh, yeah, after, after you know, so many injuries, I'm like, ah, I'm getting kind of too old. I'll still train. I'll help out the guys at the gym. But it's, it's – it's, I don't know if I'll ever go pro. And then I found the job at, at Bandai Namco. And it's like, well, if I, if I keep doing this, I'm going to get injured. And then I'm like, I'm not going to be able to work. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's follow my, my passion as an MMA fighter and try to make it or follow my passion in the video game industry and, you know, have kind of like a secure income. And I, I kind of, at, at times I kind of feel like I, I took the easy way out, but I don't regret it at all. Like I, I love working what I do. I love, and then I still get to train from time to time. You know, I still get to go in there with the younger guys and kind of be a human punching bag sometimes, <laughs> but I, I still learn. I, I still have fun in them. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, you know, there, there's a there's a four man tournament coming up. Uh, I think at the end of the year, and mm-hmm. I kind of just want to test myself, see what happens. So, it, the fire's still there, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, that that that's why I'm so passionate about MMA. Like that's the hardest sport in the world is uh, MMA. And I've always kind of been like a, a solo guy. Like I I I was never into sports. I was never into team sports. You have to rely on someone else, and you have to rely on other people in MMA training. But at the end of the day, when that cage door locks, it's you and another guy. Yeah. You have to, you know, it's 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 a kind of a very selfish sport, and I I, I like that after. Or I control everything. If I lose, it's on me. Yeah. You know, it, it it I did everything I could, but at the end of the day, it's on me. So that's why I love MMA so much. Long story short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I love the story. I love the story. Okay, I love the story. Um, 
what, what are some other things that you enjoy doing as well? I mean, aside from, like, you know, you're, you're definitely into to fitness and the training or some other things you're passionate about as well. That's pretty much it. If I'm being honest, like video games and, and, and training and, and fighting like that, that, that's it. I, that's the only thing I can think of that, that, that makes me happy. I mean, I'm, I like cooking, I guess, from time to time. But if you want to get me excited and want to, like, you know, see, put a smile on my face, talk to me about video games or talk to me about MMA or boxing or combat sports in general. Like, I, I, I love to study that stuff, and I love to, to, to study video games as well. Like, those are the two things that are – I can't think of really anything else that I really like more. And, and like, the stuff I like kind of feeds in. Like, like, I like listening to, like, music. And it's, it's, but it's only when I'm, when I'm training, like you put on a kick-ass song, I'm going to, I'm going to like <laughs> work even harder, you know? So that, that's pretty much it. Those are my passions. I don't have much. I'm a, I'm a basic boy. <laughs> All right. Well, winding down to the last uh, two questions that I have for you, because I, I definitely want to be respectful of your time and I definitely would love to have you back on the show again. I mean, we could talk. I feel like there's so much we could talk about, but like I said, I want to be respectful of your time. Just name the time and the place. <laughs> um, what, what advice would you give to the audience, uh, you know, looking either to get into the games industry or who would like to work alongside the games industry? Um, what advice would you give to guide them along the way? Uh, I mean, one of the things I mentioned earlier was, you know, um, set yourself apart. You know, find find something to set yourself apart. Also, get your foot in the door. You know, the the QA testing thing is your kind of foot in the door. So look for look for jobs as QA testers. It's going to be a contract gig. It's not even going to be like you're not working. You're working at Sony, but you're not working with Sony. You are working for a third party uh, hiring agency pretty much most of the time. That that's how uh, most uh, QA testers find their jobs uh, is through that. So like, go on LinkedIn. Look for look for companies and these 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 uh, third party hiring agencies want people that's how they get paid they find people and they want people so like that's your foot in the doors look for those qa jobs you're if, if you're just starting out you're not going to find anything better honestly unless you you have a degree in something uh you you might get lucky but most of the time you have to have your foot in the door already and you have to have like these they have to they have to see how you work and and find that so get your foot in the door first find something small and the other thing is never like it took me nine years to get where i'm at Mm-hmm. It, it takes time like don't give up on yourself because you you know like when I, when that contract was like i thought for sure i was like oh i'm so good i found all these bugs they have to hire me no it, 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 there, there's a lot of like politics and stuff like that it's 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 always about like you, what you said you know oh, forward always keep yeah. driving pushing through the walls jumping over the hurdles all that you know encouragement stuff it's true just keep driving forward. That's what I did. I was like, no, you know, okay, I didn't get the contract job here. Maybe there, there's another, you know, place that that's gonna want me. You know, and I, I, I never gave up on that. I like, sure, there were dark days, and there, there was stuff where, where it was just like, oh man, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I'll just find something else, you know, type of thing. But like, I'm not a person to give up. Don't give up on yourself. Yeah. No matter like, it, it, once you hit, if you hit rock bottom, if you think that's rock bottom. Trust me, there, 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 there are people way worse off than, than you know, working at like a, a nine to five. There, there, there's people out there, you know, like you said, being homeless and stuff like that. So don't give up on yourself. Like, know your worth. Know that you're yeah. better than what you think you are. Who you are is a stepping stone to what you can become. That's yeah. that. I forget where I got that quote, but like, it, it's it's 100% true. Just keep driving forward. And uh, lastly, then, I think there was a third piece of advice. Um Hmm. I can't really think of it at, at the time, but I, I guess those two are a good, uh, good starting point. Just, you know, keep trying for and just like you, you found video game. If you're, if you're even like thinking about being in the video game industry, you're already playing video games. So you already have the passion for it. Don't just don't lose that fire. That's it. Yeah. Is there um, anything you want to leave the audience with before we go and, when are we gonna see you out here in Hawaii, man? <laughs> uh, I, I, I would, uh, you know, one of these days, I would love to visit Hawaii. I've, I've seen, I've seen pictures. Uh, you know, uh, a few of my favorite, BJ Penn. You know, he's uh, he's from out there. Max Holloway, right now. So, yep. 
I, I, I've seen, you know, pictures, I've seen video of these, these beautiful islands and I, I definitely want to go out there. Granted, I'm, I'm Russian, so cold, ice cold blood runs through these veins. I don't <laughs> do well in, in hot temperatures, but uh, it, it looks like a, a beautiful place to stay. I definitely want to go. Uh, I'm vegetarian, but I might have to give that up to try some of those delicious Spam burgers. So I don't know. One of the, uh, I, I will make my way out there. And when I do, I will hit you up so we can, we can go and hang out. Um, Hopefully sooner than later. I don't know. Maybe maybe sometime next year. Awesome. It's, it, awesome I mean, man. it's it's not too hard to like book a ticket out there and you know kind of chill out there. Like so, I I definitely want to want to go out there and 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 see it uh, with my own eyes. Definitely. I mean, the, anytime you'd be out here, um, you'd be surprised the amount of times you'll see you'll see Max Holloway, you know, walking around somewhere, or you'll see BJ Penn or other. Uh, MMA people just it's that's just how it is out here. It's so like a lot of people I've seen tourists come and they're like, Is that Max Holloway? And I'm like, Yeah. And they're like, Oh, I, can, can I get an autograph from you? I'm like, Yeah, hey, Max, come over here. <laughs> like, literally. Like, it, and it's just, it's just how we are out here in Hawaii. Like, I, I absolutely love it. And man, anytime you come out here, just let me know if you need a place to stay. You can stay with me. I have a big house down the street from Waikiki. It's, and here's the interesting thing is all the people that I worked with in the industry, the voice actors and producers and teams from different companies, when they come out to Hawaii, they actually stay at my house. And then we just hang out for like a week or two or however long they're here. It's crazy, man. Like it's, 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 um, that's just our spirit, man. It's the Aloha spirit. So if you're out here, you need a place to stay, you can stay with me, man. Anytime. <laughs> I'm, uh, that, you, that, that's on, that's on record now. So I'm going to hold it to that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to make like that. This is also on, it's a promise. So probably, I don't know about this year. Cause I, I have a lot of traveling I got to do. I'm, I'm going out to Vegas pretty soon. I want to go back out to Japan. Uh, have you ever been in Japan by the way? No, I need to go. <laughs> yes. So if, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you, if you kind of, if you're in the video games and you're in the video game industry, or you you want to be, you got to go out to Japan, man. Like yeah, that's yeah. that's mecca out there. That's like going out there. I'm all going out to uh, I want to pronounce this right, Akihabara or Akihabara, mm -hmm. um, and and seeing all the like the video game stores and and seeing all the arcades, <laughs> like everything you saw <laughs> on the Yakuza games, it's real. It's <laughs> Like you know, sometimes you 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 see something on TV and you you don't you don't you don't believe it's 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 a it's a real thing and like you go there and it's like ah I guess it's a reasonable facsimile of what this what the, what I actually saw but going out there holy smokes it, it, <laughs> like I I was I, I I'm telling you I, every like I was just my mouth was agape the whole time I was out there and then going to Kyoto because this was in Tokyo going to Kyoto I've been in Japan three times now yeah three mm -hmm. times. And going to Kyoto, like if you like if you think Hawaii's chill, like Kyoto, man, is like time, like literally time slows down. Everything just and you're just like in super chill mode. You go to the the hot springs and you're you're going through all these temples, and it, it's 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 everything you saw in in Japanese RPGs. It's there. It's it's crazy <laughs> to me. So yeah, make sure you. Uh, that's my other piece of advice. Go to go to Japan. Travel. Awesome, man. Awesome, definitely. I. Right. Yo, I, okay. You come to Hawaii, you let me know. If I'm going to Japan, I'm going to let you know. You tell me all the spots I need to I, go to. <laughs> I think this should be the game. I go to Hawaii. We, we chill out there. You show me the sites. We, we go there. And then we, you know, we, 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 we hit it off. And then we go, we go to Japan. Me and you do a, like a blog out in Japan. Let's sometime. do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Oh man, this is awesome. Uh, t tell people where they can find you again on social media. If they have any questions or anything like that, so long as you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, I mean, obviously follow at Bandai Namco us on everything, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, that's, that, that's the reason I have a job there. So make sure you follow those, <laughs> make sure you follow those channels. First of all, if you want to follow my personal, I post stuff from Bandai Namco occasionally. Sometimes I post silly stuff. Sometimes I post, uh, half naked pictures of myself cause I'm feeling good. Uh, so won't delete later. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's just me being like buff. That's all it is. Uh, and, and it's, it's good motivation. Like I'll post something to myself and it's just like, Oh man, you're, you know, you're really in shape and it makes you feel good. So. As, as cocky as it is sometimes, it's like, hey, I am in good shape. I am working out, so I, I kind of want to show it up. You got it, flaunt it is what I say. Uh, right? You can follow me at, 
at D Clinton on Twitter. That's mostly where I post the, uh, the, the stuff. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I think it's like Demetri Clinton. I, it's more personal stuff. I mean, I, it's, it's an open thing, but like, if you, if you want to see like me traveling or me, you know, working out, that's all there too. So yeah, at D Clinton on Twitter, uh, Dimitri Clinton at, uh, on Instagram. So awesome, man. Awesome. And uh, with that being said, people, we're wrapping up this uh, podcast. You'll be able to find it um, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora. Two more. I need to think of them. What are they? What are they? I, I forgot. <laughs> All podcasting outlets, you'll be able to catch the Casanova Podcast. We're also on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Mikhail Casanova and YouTube.com slash Mikhail Casanova. I try to syndicate all the podcast episodes to be on all platforms at the same time. And you can find it. Same thing as uniform across the board, Mikhail Casanova. So definitely check it there. And uh, with that being said, people, we will catch you on the next one. Hey, did you enjoy this episode of the Casanova podcast? Well, I'm sure you did. And since you did and you're wondering where else you can find it, you can find it on every podcasting outlet. Yes, it includes Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Launchpad DM by Podcast One, and so much more. And the only thing I ask of you is if you truly enjoyed it, even if you didn't enjoy it, please leave a rating and tell us what you thought of it, what you liked, what you didn't like, and everything in between. And also, if you're looking for video formats of this podcast and many more, you'll be able to find them on youtube.com slash Mikhail Casanova, as well as on twitch.tv slash Mikhail Casanova, and new episodes every single Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, that being said, this is Mikhail Casanova, Hawaii's favorite YouTuber. I am signing out. You guys have a great one.